Well, hello, all my subscribers over the Southeast U.S. I'm John Felt, and this is the weekly water outlook for June 9th, 2013. Well, you know, it's been a pretty interesting week over the Southeast U.S. with Tropical Storm Andrea moving up the Northeast uh, U.S., right along the coastline, a little bit further inland, uh, and producing very heavy rainfall, and I'll be talking about that in just a bit. The um, soil moisture anomalies, I wanted to sort of start off and set the stage. These are generally did not capture all the rain from uh, the tropical storm, so it's going to be much wetter than what we see here. But you can see that we have much of the southeast U.S. right now is experiencing above normal soil moisture due to either recent rain uh, in the past over the last couple months or else with the uh, tropical storm Andrea as it moved up uh, to the northeast this week. I wanted to show you the extent of the rain. Uh, the areas in yellow are two and a half to four inches of rain, and look, that's fairly widespread. Uh, I think I can draw a line here. Uh, generally, uh, anything east of this line right here uh, received a very significant rain, either directly or indirectly from the tropical activity, and that's the southeast uh, half or two-thirds of Georgia, almost all of South Carolina, all of North Carolina, and eastern parts of Virginia. Matter of fact, I think that in other than the northeast U.S., which is highly urbanized and definitely gets impacts with any tropical type rainfall, North Carolina probably was the hardest hit with the most significant rain, as well as Florida with some of the initial rainfall. But I think the story here is look how widespread this tropical rainfall impacted the southeast U.S. Uh, with the exception of northwest Georgia, Mississippi and Alabama, and Tennessee, most of the region did receive some very significant rainfall. Now if we close up, uh, take a close up look here, you can see that within this area of three inches of rain or so, there were these pockets of heavier rain, and the red are up to six inches of rain, six to eight inches, and I'm sure there were some isolated higher amounts but they were generally fairly scattered. Now the most compact areas or the most significant areas of heavier rain, that six inches to eight inches or more, was really centered in that area between Raleigh, Fayetteville, and off into the western part of the state towards Charlotte. That was fairly extensive heavier rain in that region, as well as coastal parts of South Carolina. Interesting to see that the southern half of the Savannah River Basin between Augusta and Savannah also received very significant rainfall in that pocket of heavier rainfall. So if we look at the forecast for flooding, uh, you all know that the heaviest, uh, the most significant flooding would be that red, that's moderate. The lighter amounts of flooding or minor flooding is the orange and high flows are yellow. So parts of the rivers uh, in and around Raleigh, uh, parts of the Noose, the Cape Fear, and the Tar River Basins, and their tributaries look like they're the hardest hit, and that's very directly associated with those pockets of heavier rainfall. Now, it's interesting to see that the lower Savannah River, as well as receiving some high flows, Clio there, that's yellow, not flooding, but it's for many, many months we've been talking about very low flows, so it's interesting to see that this did bring the flows up on the far southern Savannah River Basin as well. So as I go into the summer months, I'm going to be talking a lot more about surpluses of rainfall or deficits of rainfall. I wanted to point out how widespread the surpluses of rainfall over the last week were over the southeast U.S. Now green is surpluses of one inch, blue, light blue two inches, dark blue three inches, purple four inches, even some of that brighter purple five inches. So depending how you look at this, um, it can either be an insurance if we really dry out this summer, we've gained anywhere from two to five inches of excess precipitation. Or if we get into a situation where we get more flooding, this could be a liability. But I think going into summertime, keep in mind, I look at it more as insurance because you know we're going to get those periods of dry weather and we're going to need this excess rain. So we've gained over most of the southeast U.S. significant amounts of excess rain over the last week. Not as much over Mississippi and Alabama, but definitely over the entire rest of the area. Matter of fact, it's very widespread here, uh, covers the southeast U.S. Now we've got some significant changes in store over the next week or two. This is the current jet stream pattern. We have a dip over the middle part of the nation. Uh, this energy, you sort of see a light 
uh, shading of yellow here, uh, right in here. This is sort of the pocket of energy, and that'll be moving off to the east. And that'll trigger a round of showers and thunderstorms over the southeast U.S., mainly early this week. After that, it looks like we're going to really be shifting our pattern. This is the steering wind pattern as we get into the middle part of the week. The jet stream really lifts up to the north. And when I see this with the trough of low pressure over the east and west coast and a pushing of a ridge over the middle part of the nation, generally speaking, this means hot and dry. Now for the southeast U.S., there's going to be some caveats to that, and I want to point those out. Note that the core of this high pressure is right here in the middle part of the nation. We're going to have it beginning to dip in this region. Oftentimes what this is, means to the southeast U.S. is there's just enough energy to bring additional showers and thunderstorms, especially over Virginia, North and South Carolina, uh, Kentucky, parts of western or eastern Tennessee. So that region right in here is dominated a little bit more by some of the energy coming around here. And then as we get into Alabama and um, Mississippi and the western parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, that's dominated more by this high pressure. So keep that in mind that even though that core of high pressure means hot and dry, that could very well be to our west and we could be still influenced by that eastern trough um, over that region of the eastern U.S. Now this is a persistent pattern. I wanted to show the 6 to 10 day and those uh, Red dashed lines are anomalies of positive atmospheric pressure. That's saying that ridge is expected to stay in that region right through the 10-day period. But look at this area purple, that dashed purple line. That's saying more normal over the southeast U.S. And I think that's hinting at the jet stream dipping a bit over our region, perhaps giving us a chance of showers and thunderstorms from time to time. So here's the rainfall forecast for the next seven days. Most of this precipitation is coming in the early part of the forecast period with that energy as we transition from that mid uh, trough, middle U.S. trough to the ridge. And um, if we look at the soil moisture changes, because it's very scattered, I think this is what we're likely to see is we are still likely to see drying soils. Even though the um, precipitation will occur over most of the southeast U.S. on and off, um, the general trend is going to be drier and warmer temperatures, and that will mean drying upper soil moisture. Now, if we look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, I wanted to point out that, that little change is really expected. We have the core of hot temperatures over the middle part of the nation. And it is trending over the southeast U.S. So it does look like these warmer temperatures are going to continue right into the latter part of the month. And this is that pattern I was talking about. Even though that core of dry weather is out to our west, look at this here. There is the possibility of above normal precipitation over the Carolinas and uh, parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. And then we get into the drier weather over the south and west. So I do think there'll be enough energy to bring that in. So it could very well be parts of the southeast U.S. Uh, very warm and dry. Parts of the southeast U.S. very warm with scattered showers and thunderstorms. If I look at the long-range precipitation towards the end of June, you see that pattern a little bit more clearly where the heavier amounts of rain are. And I wouldn't get too carried away with the amounts of rain right now, but just the trends here. And I think this shows it very well. So the takeaway points from today's briefing, big changes, a building upper ridge pattern. We're going from that mid-level uh, trough early in the period to an upper ridge. Storms will be early in the week, perhaps later in the week as well. But the trend is going to be generally warmer temperatures and drying conditions in most areas. And I think there'll be just enough jet energy to keep enough showers and thunderstorms around here and there for the next couple weeks. But that'll primarily be over northern parts of the southeast U.S., and southern parts of the southeast U.S. and western parts will be definitely trending more on the dry side. Well, that's this week's briefing. I enjoyed uh, speaking with you once again. If you ever have any questions, you can reach me at john at bluewateroutlook.com. We'll be sending out information throughout the week and talking to you again next week. Thank you.